when working from home, it can sometimes be a struggle to pull it together, get out of your pajamas, and actually get some work done. Today's video is all about how to make your workspace more productive. And while I am speaking from a work at home perspective, this certainly applies to those of us who might be uh, stay at home parents, or even if you work outside of the home. We could all use a space where we can sit down and get super productive. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Martin Bay TV, inspiring life, home, and style. Hi, I'm Kim from martinmade.com. Thanks so much for clicking on today's video. If you're new here, welcome, and thank you so much. Please consider subscribing. Um, this channel is all about home decor, interior design, organization, and productivity. So if those are things you're into, I think you'll like this channel. Getting into today's video, creating a workspace that is most productive for you. I thought it would be really cool to kind of hop on here because I'm obviously looking like I'm working from home today, but I wanted to hop on and give some really quick tips on how to create a productive workspace. It's something that I personally struggled with. Um, I work from home most days of the week. I do have a full-time job, but most days of the week I'm right here in pajamas or at least something that is as comfortable as pajamas. I think that's one of the tips I've learned along the way. Get out of your pajamas. <laughs> it makes you feel like a productive member of society. So we'll get into today's video. The first tip I have for you is organization. Organization is key. If there's clutter around or if you don't know where anything is located, there's absolutely no way you can be productive. Um, it'll take you maybe half your time to find your favorite pen. It'll take you half the time to find those lined post-it notes that you prefer. Organization is key. Making sure you have everything you need within arm's reach of your desk area is really helpful when you're trying to get in the zone, you know, sit down, focus, and get your work done. I actually have a video about organization, some really quick tips, um, an introductory kind of video about organization, giving you some tips on how to be more organized if that's an area that you struggle with. I'll link it up there in the eye and also down in the description box if you're interested. The second tip I have for you is to set the mood. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I am into coffee. Coffee is my jam, it's my thing. So I need a warm cup of coffee. Doesn't even matter if it's summer. Um, I really do need a warm cup of coffee in the morning and it doesn't have to be caffeinated. It just has to be a warm drink. And that really kind of gets me in the zone and it sets the mood for the course of my day. So set the mood for the course of your day. If that means tea, have some tea. If that means iced coffee, have some iced coffee. You might want to light some candles. You might want to turn on some music. I know a lot of people are into music or listening to things while they work. You can turn on music, you can turn on podcasts, even audiobooks are a really good idea if that's something that'll help you get the brain juices going and get really productive. There is the idea that background noise or kind of like that white noise that we hear in the background, you may not be actively focusing on what you're hearing, but it can help you focus on you know, the task at hand. So that's something to explore. Some people really need that extra, I was gonna say distraction, but to them it's not a distraction, but that extra ambient noise, if you will, in the background to really help them focus and hone in on their task. There's also the idea that different colors can affect your mood or different colors can increase productivity um, and your output. I've never tried it. It may or may not work. Actually, if you've tried it or if you have some insight, leave a comment down below letting me know if you think that works. Or if you haven't tried it and you think it's a bunch of hogwash, leave a comment down below letting me know you think it's absolutely crazy. The next tip I have is to create different zones. I've kind of um, tied or, or keyed into this as I've been working from home for the past couple of years. Um, I find that I need a space for work. So if I need to be typing up things or really thinking, you know, I need to type up things or create documents or things like that, I need to sit at a desk just as I would in an office space. I need to sit at a desk. I need it to be laid out just like a desk. You know, sometimes it's my dining room table. Sometimes it's the small desk that I have in my master bedroom or actually in my office. Um, I do have an office. I don't always sit there, but anyway, um, I need to sit at a desk type space and I need to have, like I said, everything in arm's reach, a stapler, my pens, my pencils, all that good stuff. So that's my zone for writing and actually putting things together. Um, you might have a zone 
for emails. Like if you're responding to emails, maybe you can do that while you're sitting on the couch, you know, and it's something that's a more productive workflow for you. You could have, I don't know, maybe like Netflix on the TV while you're responding to emails because sometimes those don't really require a whole lot of brain work or a whole lot of thinking. So it's something that you can do while also being entertained or while also having that background noise going on in the background. Another thing I've learned is to not eat where I work. I don't know if this is personal for me and it might be, but I cannot eat at my desk. I don't know what it is. I've never really been able, been comfortable with it when I did work in an office setting or when I do work in a traditional office setting. Um, it makes the day feel like it's 15 hours long. I cannot like eat my lunch or my meals or my snacks at my desk. Not gonna happen. So I suggest you try the same thing. So if you are, for instance, working from home at your desk area, maybe have your lunch in the kitchen. Maybe have your lunch in front of the TV while watching Netflix or binging on some YouTube videos like the ones on Martin May TV. But yeah, setting up different spaces for different areas or different segments of your day really helps the day flow smoothly and it also helps you kind of get in the zone. So you know when you're sitting down at your desk, it's time to work and it's time to put some things out. When you're sitting on the couch with Netflix or YouTube in the background, you can just easily go through all of those emails quickly and get them out the door. Setting up different zones will create a more productive workflow for your day. The fourth tip I have is really kind of like a follow-up. It's about maintaining that productive workspace. So like I said, if you have a desk area, make sure at the end of your work sessions, everything goes back to where it belongs. It makes it so much easier for the next day where you're gonna be working from home to just sit down and get straight to work. So really maintaining that space, putting things back where they belong. I strongly believe that if you clear the clutter, you can clear your mind. So remove all of those things that can be visual distractions or even sometimes for us, for some of us, our phones can be a distraction. So, you know, if you put those on do not disturb or sit them to the side, that'll be what you need to maintain your productive workspace. I actually have a printable links below all about creating and maintaining a productive workspace. It talks about setting your schedule, setting the mood, um, all the things that we covered in this video, but with a little more detail. So I invite you to click on that link to get that free printable below. Thanks so much for joining me here for today's video. And to recap, we went over how to create a productive workspace. The first step was to stay organized, well, to get organized and stay organized. The second step was to set the mood. The third step or the third idea is to create different zones for your work day. And the fourth is to maintain that productive workspace. Thanks again for joining me on today's video. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Also like the video and leave a comment down below. See you guys in the next one.